Ugh. What's up, internet? We are here, Ted. Up with Sean. And we're going to do a review of Too Many Games 2015. Um, this is a convention I went to for the first time last year. Your first time? This year. Um, so we just want to do a quick rundown. Uh, I can do a little bit of a comparison from last year, and you can talk about um, going for the first time. First impressions. So why don't you start with that, first impressions. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot less overwhelming than a lot of the other uh, conventions I've been to. It's relatively small and uh, definitely more interactive. Uh, a lot yeah. of independent game developers, uh, be it tabletop games or board games or video games or like phone games, and uh, a lot of them just genuinely wanted you to play their game and tell tell them what you think. Yeah. Tell them how to make it better, what you liked, what you didn't like. So it was a very friendly atmosphere. Um, yeah, and uh, I found that a lot of conventions are money pits. Everything you want to do, everything that's fun costs money. This one isn't. It's a lot of fun for a little dollar amount. Yeah, I think uh, entry was, what, for all day weekend pass, 30 bucks? 35 for the base level three-day pass. And I think that may have only been 35 at the door. I think it may have been 30 if you played pre, pre-ordered. Um, so, yeah, so 30 to 30, you know, 30, I think the highest end ticket is like 75. Um, so I guess we'll just start there. There's your one day, two day, three day passes. There's a mini boss pass, which I think gets you some more raffle tickets, and I think it might get you a t-shirt. Um, and it, all the badges were different this year, which was nice. Like, they had a different design. Yeah. It was all earthbound themed, so different characters. Um, and the final boss, which was the highest end badge, came with a special t-shirt, a messenger bag, a bigger badge with a custom design on it, as well as entrance into the after party. So that's pretty much the big ticket item is the after party. Um, so, like you said, vendors selling wares, homemade wares, tons of classic gaming stuff. Um, but then you get all your cool people capitalizing on that with the cool art and statues mm -hmm. and blankets and uh, a lot of t-shirt vendors. Um, similar to a lot of other conventions, you had a board game library. Yep. You could rent in tons of table space, so if you wanted to bring your own play something you just bought there, or rent a game. We saw D&D mats set up. Yep, so there's tons of, of, of room to play games. Um, there was the console kind of free play area, mm -hmm. which was kind of past that, which was a whole bunch of just TVs with various consoles going from ColecoVision all the way up to PS4, and and uh, even, so I think, I don't know if there was there this year, but last year they had like old Apple II set up with Oregon Trail. Oh, stuff like nice! That. I don't think, I didn't see any this year, but that doesn't mean... Yeah, it doesn't mean they weren't there. Um, the, contrary to last year, they had a um, they had a handheld gaming lounge, which was just like big beanbag chairs yeah. and stuff to yeah. just like hang out and play your Vita or your 3DS or whatever. Um, they had a tournament stage, which was separate now. Last year it was kind of in the middle of the, the free play area. There was just like one TV where they were playing. This was actually like on a little bit of an elevated stage with its own set of speakers and like pe places where people could sit and watch for, you know, tournaments from everything from Smash Brothers and Mario Kart to, you know, Dr. Mario. So, um, that was really cool. And uh, then they had the indie game section, which was, like you would mentioned, board games, card games, all that. Um, they had a section for autograph signings, and then, like, you know, you go into the middle, it was mostly music. And then, uh, you know, you had the food and stuff in the back. Um, something different this year was they actually had a free-to-play arcade, which was... Yeah. A bunch of various arcade cabinets from old school stuff like Pac-Man um, to like Dance Dance Revolution, and then things like Time Crisis and Time Crisis Two, and you know Area Fifty One and pinball machines and all that. And those were all completely free to play, um, so you could just go and, and do that, uh, which was which was neat. Yeah, it was neat. Um, and they had the concert venue hall, which was just concerts all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, various chiptune artists and, and and the like were just doing concerts. You know, pretty much every hour there was a new concert that you could just go and attend for free, or you know, walk right off of that and go play uh, the arcade. Yep. Um, I think that and there were two panel rooms. There was uh, there's the three panel rooms. There were three. Yeah, there was one hidden like down a hallway towards the bathroom. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. So last year there was only two. Uh, this year there I guess there was three. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the kind of bigger room, and then there's like a one that's a little smaller yeah. for more intimate, uh, smaller panels. The intimate smaller panels. Um, 
and uh, there was that lounge. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what the lounge was. There was a lounge. It was like an expo lounge, and nobody need, knows what it. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what it was for. Um, they act, well, just kind of quick since we're talking about layout. Um, food that was there. Food was reasonably priced. Um, which I mean, when you're used to paying nine dollars for a co convention bottle of water, I think it was like five dollars for a tall boy can months, of yeah. beer. Um, nice. And like varying. Usually, when you're at a convention, you typically have like fries, onion rings, and, like, pretzels. Yeah. And chips. But they also had, like, uh, hot dogs. I think they had sausage and pepper sandwiches. They had, like, actual substantial food. And, again, moderately priced. Yeah. Um, three yeah. ATMs on site, which was kind of yeah. nice. Um, so I think that's pretty much the overall layout of the convention and how kind of things were kind of set up. So uh, let's talk cosplay at the convention. So why don't you talk about, you know... Were there cosplayers? A lot of there were cosplayers. Um, how does it compare to like a bigger convention? Is it more? There were fewer cosplayers, and I, f I, I found that the cosplay was more specifically directed towards video games, which yeah. you uh, wouldn't be surprised about. But the people who were in cosplay had good costumes. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a good, cool community. Um, take it away, Ted. Okay. Um, uh, we can't really speak on the panels that were there this year because we, we didn't go. really go to any go except panel. for the one that we, uh, our panel, our panel. Um, we didn't really attend the concerts. No, but we could hear them, so they sounded good. Sounded good. Um, there was a burlesque, uh, burlesque show, which Friday was night. half really good, yeah, and half terrible. And it was not anything to do with the girls or the crowd. No, the girls were great, and the crowd seemed into it too. Uh, the MC was uh, irritating. Long-winded. Yes, sure. long-winded. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and it took it detracted from the situation. But I mean, of the dancers we saw, they were really clever, really original, really creative. Sure. Um, I think they were members of Broad Street Burlesque in Philly. So if you get a chance, check them out. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, again this year we did not get into the after party like we did last year. Um, so we are unable to speak on that. But you know, last year I know there's. There was food provided, um, you know, there was a shorter, there was a concert, and I'm sure there was other things happening, probably Q&As and things like that. Um, but because you are fed at this, it is exclusive, although guests and I believe vendors also gain access to that. So, something to think about if you're thinking about uh, showing up and, and selling something, you know, you may get access to the after party. Um, so we talked about the convention itself, uh, we talked about the cosplay, we talked about sort of the after party. Um, why don't we talk about the games? Uh, things that you like. There liked. were too many. Uh, I've heard that too that's a thing. Too many games. Uh, games that you played that you really liked. Cobalt's are coming. Uh, I don't know who made it. Cardboard something. Cardboard something. Uh, excellent game called Cobalt's are coming. It's a cooperative game where you're fighting against, uh, uh you know, randomly generated and controlled kobolds and... Just so much fun, and the biggest disappointment of the convention was I couldn't buy it because they're still playtesting. Yeah, they were actually there last year playtesting. The game has improved a lot; it's gotten a lot harder, but it was still fun, which is what yeah. is a good uh, virtue of. We game. lost, and we're, we're like and we we're, had a blast. We lost, and we were thinking about like going back the same day and trying to play again. Yeah, um, yeah, that was probably one of the highlights of my. Uh, it was my of my convention mm -hmm. was playing Kobolds are coming. Although I did try a couple of really fun um, video games. There was a that one eight bit kind of side scroller where beat 'em up was yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, that was cool. Um, you played that one RPG where everybody dies. Yeah, uh, that was fun. I don't have the card on me. I wish I did. The Dar. I think? The D I D A R. Yeah, it was uh, like an RPG eight bit style graphics and and play style where uh, there are thirty people in the town. Something bad is happening, and every night someone dies. And the person who dies is randomly generated, mm -hmm. uh, and that changes everything, since like it's based on a small town. So when one person dies, everyone is affected, and they're all affected differently depending on who dies. And then you have to go into dungeons, like puzzle dungeons, like, um, I don't know, like the ice levels in... The one I did was like one of the ice gyms from uh, the later Pokemon, mm -hmm. where you have to... Da -da 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 -da. Um, and... Uh, it was a lot of fun, and even on the demo, the they started you off with three dead people, 
and who are randomly generated, and so even if you can go and keep playing the demo, and yeah. the demo will be different every time. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, again, I, I recommend uh, this convention to anybody, but... Uh, so we talked about some of the games. Again, I think Cold Worlds Are Coming was my personal favorite. I yeah. played a couple of fun, um, that one asteroid-based shooter game where you're yeah. that was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, um, what was it called? Like Blow Up Rocks or something? Yeah. We're really bad uh, at the names yeah. here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just nice. I like going to smaller conventions with indie game people because they want you to play their games. And like I played a different game, um, and like I glitched the game out. Like I got stuck in terrain, and like the developer was super excited because that was like a glitch that potentially, like I happened to be in the right place at the right time doing the right move, and it locked me into the terrain. And he's like, "This is great, you know. Like now I know to fix this bug." Yeah. Um, oh, shrimp everywhere! Shrimp everywhere! Black Slither Games, a game company that I am well acquainted to. I own everything that they've made so far. Local. Uh, local to us here in New York, and um, they had a new game that they debuted. Um, I think it's going to be going to Kickstarter, potentially by the time this video comes out, yeah. or within the next week, uh, called Shrimp Everywhere. Um, it's a word-based card game similar to things like Cards Against Humanity. Um, and do you want to tell... Yeah. Uh, uh, there are three types of cards. Uh, there are nouns, actions, and shrimp. And you need to make a sentence with each one. There's one judge who d d determines who won. And it's, yeah, you try and make the funniest sentence. You need to use one of each. And there are also shrimp plus cards where you can throw more stuff at the end. And and cards where you can throw in extra nouns. Um, and it is uh, offensive in the vein that Cards Against Humanity is. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We, played, we played a quick round. Yeah, with, uh, with one of the devs. And it was... Um... It's, again, like Cards Against Humanity, when you are the judge, you do not play because you're judging the other mm -hmm. people. We didn't really get too much when we, because we just did it quick, kind of in passing. Um, how many points to win, or is it something, you know, where you just basically, you play till you get bored, and at yeah. the end you total up who has the most points. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's essentially, basically just as you described. So, for instance, the sentence that I did was, Michael Jackson dressed as Hitler and an uncomfortable couple breaking up in public with everyone watching, going to town on a large adult diaper full of shrimp. And mine was the future corpse of Tobey Maguire failing to seal the deal with Charlie Manson's jail cell filled with shrimp and raccoons. Right. Um, so, again, th that's the kind of stuff that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of different cards. We talked to... Um, the developer about potentially expansions. They already said they may even be working on something like that. Potentially covered in shrimp rather than full of shrimp. Um, but yeah, just a fun game to be on the lookout for. Uh, coming to Kickstarter soon. Um, and I think that uh, I think that was pretty much it for the games, right? Yeah. We didn't really play anything else. Yeah. Um, Alright, let's talk about uh, swag. What did you take home from the convention? I, uh, well, I took home... <laughs> Many pins. Yeah, a lot of the, the devs. buttons. That was yeah, a... pins, and I got some buttons that had just really good artwork on it. Um, I took, a, I got a Tali from Mass Effect, Ogren from Dragon Age, and a Wash, all like kind of cartoony style. Uh, I, I was really impressed with the art. I, the only reason I bought the Ogren pin is because he looked drunk and sad. Like you could see the sadness in his eyes in the little pin. So I bought it. Um, I also got a 8-bit kind of style... Um, mushroom? Thank you. A uh, 1-Up Mushroom from Mario made out of Legos, which was yeah. cool. That's uh, Block Sprites, I believe, is the, uh, the company. Oh, okay. BlockSprites.com, I believe. It, um, like we said, all kind of 8-bit old-school uh, uh, mascots and things like and enemies and things all made out of Legos. Yeah. They also do cool 3D printed stuff. Yeah. Um, like I like their work. Polygon like stuff from uh, Mega Man or Mega Man, uh, Final Fantasy VII. Yep. Final, and some uh, some fancier, more expensive ones. I think there's some Final Fantasy VIII ones in there. Yeah, because on But um, yeah, I think you're right. So yeah, you got some good stuff. Um, I actually, because this is my house, I actually have the swag. So, um, I picked up a bunch of CDs from Game Chops. I'm a big fan of DJ Cutman and all their work, so I got a bunch of CDs. This is a Brentofloss CD. This is the What If 
This CD had lyrics. This is the OG Brental Floss CD, signed by the man himself. Um, I got a poster that came with that, and uh, the classic Brental Floss t-shirt to go with that. Classic Brental Floss. True that, son. <laughs> uh, I picked up a couple of t-shirts uh, from the lovely folks at Shark Robot. I got this sweet evolution of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, you're showing me! Nice! So I got that. You went back and got that. That's awesome. I did. I got the, uh, the third trifecta of the starter shirts from Shark Robot. This is the Bitch I'll HM 1U shirt. I already have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Squirtles and you have the Charmander Shepard. Yep. Um, and I went to, I can't remember his name, I think I have his card. Uh, if you guys have ever seen the things, uh, the shirts, the various shirts on Loot Crate that are made up, various characters made up of words that describe said characters, um, first of all, this guy that was at the convention is the guy who does that for Loot Crate. So just to sort of clear the air, if you were curious if they were ripping off him or he was ripping off them, he is the guy who actually does the artwork to provide to Loot Crate. Um, and I had to get my wife something, because she said I should get her something. So I got her a Deadpool one that's all made out of words. But there was a sale on them, so I got a Lumpy Space Princess. Nice! Because, oh my god, how could you not get Lumpy Space Princess? <laughs> um, and uh, since we were sort of on a Cobalt's kick, I picked up this fun new light uh, tabletop RPG called Cobalt Ate My Baby. Oh, no. Um, this is by the classic beer and pretzels role-playing game. This is by Ninth Level Games. Um, it takes basically the trope of typical adventuring and flips it on its head, and you are the kobolds trying to survive, provide food for your family as adventurers keep coming into your home and killing all your friends. <laughs> um, so uh, I haven't really read through it, but that's what this is. They also gave me the... You is Kobolds, which is basically the very quick to play, um, sort of the starter set. You could play with just this, and the main book has the expansion with, or not the expansion, but the all all the actual rules. Um, if you're curious about the cover art, they are going from second edition prior Kobolds when they are actually like dog people, not before third edition when they changed to the dragon uh, type of Kobolds. And I also picked up Game of Torgs, which is their Potentially, possibly, based on a popular HBO slash book series uh, pre-written campaign. And um, I don't have them with me here, or maybe I do. I do. They also have a short 15-card expansion for Munchkin that is tied to uh, the game or the game of Torg slash Cobalt Ate My Baby game. Well, that's awesome. So that was cool. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Um, the only other thing I got was from a raffle by being a good Samaritan and helping a fellow gamer nerd out with the giant box of swag that she won at the end game, uh, end of the show raffle, um, because people were ravenous for free stuff. Uh, I helped her bring all her stuff out to her car and she actually gave me some free stuff. Shout out to her! I, oh, I know your name and it's just escaping me. I feel awful. But you know who you are. You know. I know your husband's name is Brian. That's probably not helping you. It's not, but that's you okay. She said that. Um, it's in. It's in. It's forever. Uh, but she gave me the Angry Video Game Nerd movie and this sweet charging base for Xbox One, two Xbox One controllers. Nerds helping nerds makes me cry. Happy tears of joy, and that's it. Okay. So that was uh, that was my my swag that I picked up from the con. Um, I would have loved to have picked up some more games. I just feel like I don't know. It's even though I've been there last year, it was still sort of overwhelming. And like, I you know, you get caught up in the cosplay and doing the panel, and you know, potentially getting there late and having to eat, and you know, street passes like crazy on your 3ds. And you just like, I wanted to sit down and play every game, but you know, you go to a game, somebody else is playing it, and you're like, I want to come back to that, and then you just forget about yeah. it. Um, but yeah, that I think is pretty much it for the review. Uh, the big question. Would you go back to this convention again? Yeah. Just it was, a, it was a quick hard yes. Okay. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, no reason not. No reason not to. Um, even if you only get a one day pass, even if you can only go for one day, it's still a fun day. Yeah, I mean, and it seems like compared to last year, they are getting bigger and better. More of the convention 
was filled with with vendors and booths. Last year there was a lot more open space. Like that whole far back wall, that was just empty space. Okay. Um, so they are expanding. They added more to this whole free arcade. Um, there's even like a wrestling, like my mini, like a yeah, pro wrestling. Yeah, pro thing. cosplay wrestling. We, we didn't get the chance to go, but, but uh, yeah. Um, sounded cool. It's in a great area. The Greater Philadelphia Expo Center has a lot of room, ample parking. So you pro yo place right down the road. Uh, bowling alley right around the corner. So, you know, you got options, bro. So. Yeah, um, I'll obviously be going back. This, uh, having gone to more conventions, this still probably is ranked as my number one convention. Nice. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, maybe we'll see you guys there next year. Um, so yeah. If you, if you see us, give us a high five. Yeah.